continuing our sermon series, Boldness in Boom and Bust. As we talked about last week, we are currently living through what we call a time of bust right now. Casper and a majority of Wyoming is largely dependent upon how our energy fields are doing. And as we all know right now, they're not doing that well. As a result, our economy is struggling. And what happens when we're in a time of bust is that it can be easy to lose faith. It can be easy to find ourselves filled with fear. It can be easy to find ourselves scared to move forward. Because of that, we're spending this month looking at one key concept, and that concept is boldness. When we demonstrate boldness, it means that we are not hesitant or fearful in the face of actual or possible danger. Rather, we are courageous and daring. Obviously, it's a lot easier to not be hesitant or fearful when we're experiencing a time of boom, right? You and I usually find it easier to be courageous and daring during good times. Amen. Because of that, what we're really focusing on this month is how we demonstrate boldness in those times of bust in our lives. And in order to do just that, we're examining the stories of some of the boldest people in the Bible. And this morning, we're taking a look at Abraham's story. Now, as Marvin already referenced, I realized that in our scripture, Abraham is still Abram. He, he doesn't become Abraham and say, right, doesn't become Sarah until chapter 17 in the book of Genesis. But for the sake of continuity and consistency here this morning, we're going to refer to them as Abraham and Sarah. Now, in our passage, Abraham encounters the fear of the unknown. God calls him to leave the land that he's familiar with and knows for a new land. And if you notice in the story, God initially doesn't tell Abraham where this land is located. God simply says, leave your country your kindred, and your father's house for a land that I will show you. There's not a lot of detail in that church. Amen. (laughs) He's asking Abraham to, to leave his land and go to this undesignated place without a detailed itinerary of how all of this is going to play out for Abraham and his family. The encouraging or the enticing part of God's call is found in verse 2 of the 12th chapter of Genesis, God says to Abraham, I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. That sounds pretty good. Amen. That sounds all right. But one of the problems that Abraham could have had with God's promise here comes a little before our passage in chapter 11, verse 30, where we're told that Sarah was barren. She had no child. How is Abraham going to become a great nation without any descendants? On top of that, he's 75 years old. And we don't have any way of knowing with any degree of certainty if Abraham's 75 years is like what 75 years would mean to us today. We don't know. But what we do know is that at that point in time, he and Sarah have no children. I want you to put yourself in Abraham's shoes for just a moment. Let's just leave the age out of it for now and say that you are a, an adult who is well settled in your current setting. You like where you live. You're very comfortable with where you live. You enjoy having your extended family around you. Again, life is comfortable. Life is good. But then out of nowhere, God calls you to pack up and leave for an undesignated land without any real or tangible details of how that's going to work out. There's no mention of the possible dangers that you might face. There's no mention of how you're going to provide for your family along the way. There's no mention of how long any of this is going to take. But there is a promise. There's a promise that you will be a great nation, be blessed, and be a blessing to others. Would you do it? Would you just pick up and leave? Like Abraham, we often encounter the fear of the unknown. 
This current bust is a great example of us encountering the fear of the unknown. And I've had several friends at the gym where I work out who've really been impacted by this bust. One of my friends is a trainer, and her husband has worked in the oil field all of his adult life. That's been everything that he has ever known. And when things first started to take that downward turn, she told me that they weren't too worried because her husband's company had told him that he wouldn't be laid off, or that at least he'd be the last laid off, no matter how bad things got. Once things did get worse, he was not laid off, but his hours were drastically cut, which was a problem because they have three kids, and her job is only part-time. And she would often talk about the overwhelming fear of the unknown that they were facing as a family. Well, as you can probably guess, her husband was eventually laid off and the fear of the unknown became all too real. The conversations and questions in their house changed drastically. At one time, they were talking about where they might vacation in the summer, but before they knew it, they were asking each other, how do we pay the mortgage this month? How do we buy groceries? What happens if one of the kids needs something that we can't afford? Those were just a few of the questions that they were wrestling with at that time. But we don't have to work in the energy industries or have a loved one who does to experience a time of bust in our lives. The fear of the unknown can find us pretty much anywhere and everywhere. The fear of the unknown can find us in our jobs. It can find us in our relationships. It can find us in our health. It can find us in our finances. Each and every one of us here today has had to encounter the fear of the unknown at some point in our lives. Amen? We've all been there. And it's usually not an easy place to be. But there is good news this morning. And the good news that we find in the scripture is that God gives Abraham the courage to step out in faith. God gives Abraham the courage to take on the fear of the unknown head on. He doesn't have to run or hide from it. God gives Abraham the courage to trust in God's call and in God's promise. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely surprised that Abraham doesn't ask God any questions in our passage today, at least not any that are recorded. And by contrast or comparison, think back to the call of Moses. You know, Moses starts off by telling God there's no way he can be the leader that goes to free the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. He says, can't do it, God. And then he gives God a litany of excuses as to why he can't do it. But we don't have that here with Abraham. He doesn't say no to God. He doesn't even try and bargain with God. In verse 4, it simply says, so Abraham went as God had told him. That's it. So Abraham went as God had told him. He doesn't ask God if he can put the move off for a while. He doesn't ask God for more details. Like I say, he doesn't bargain at all. He simply packs up and leaves. He courageously steps out in faith. Because Abraham courageously steps out in faith and takes on the fear of the unknown, he goes on to become a foundational figure of faith. In chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews, which is also known as the faith chapter, Abraham is recognized for his immense faith. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll start at verse 1. It reads, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham received the power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful, who had promised. 
Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. I especially like verse 1. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Abraham was far from a great nation when God called him. He didn't even have children yet. But faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Abraham didn't know what land he was going to or where it was located, but again, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. In that same way, church, God gives us the courage to step out in faith. God gives us the courage to take on the fear of the unknown head on. We don't have to run or hide from it here today or any day. God gives us the courage to trust in God's call and in God's promise. You know, many of you have heard me talk before about the leap of faith that Chris and I took when we moved to Ohio for seminary with a, a one-year-old and with a baby on the way. And it was a leap of faith, but here's the thing. We weren't settled anywhere yet. We were only 22 years old and really just starting out in our lives together. You know, the hardest part by far was leaving our, our family, but the move overall made sense for us. And I say that it made sense because Pastor Mary and I are first career pastors. This is all we have known. But the trend right now is the overwhelming majority of students graduating from seminary are second or third career individuals, meaning that those aspiring to be pastors or professors or counselors are in their second or third career in doing so. I had so many friends and classmates in seminary who had uprooted their families and changed careers in order to courageously step out in faith and follow God's call. One of my friends was a, a single mother who was from Alaska, and it took her family over a week to drive from where they lived in Alaska to Columbus, Ohio. I mean, talk about an adventure and fear of the unknown. Another friend left a very lucrative career in banking behind in Texas as he uprooted his family to move to Ohio. And he had children who were school-aged. I knew lawyers and teachers and other professionals who left everything behind to answer God's call. And that's great. It's, it's awesome. It really is. But the problem is we often think that God is only calling or talking to people like Abraham or to pastors when in truth God is calling and talking to each and every one of us here today. Amen. It, it is not an exclusive call. God is still speaking to all of us. So with that in mind, where is it that God is calling you to courageously step out in faith in your life? Where is it that God has given you the courage to take on the fear of the unknown in your life? And I invite you to really spend some time discerning the answers to those questions. And here's why. I invite us to do that because God isn't done with us yet, church. God isn't done with us yet. God is still present in our lives. God is still speaking to us. God is still transforming us. God's promises are real. And it's up to us to partner with God as we courageously step out in faith in order to change our lives and the world around us. So today and every day going forward, I invite you to be bold like Abraham. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen.